Good morning, good morning friends. It's time for another garden tour. We got a lot of stuff going on today, which I can't wait to show you. So it's on top of my cattle panel right now. I love sitting out here and just watching everything that goes on. Um, my buddy CK is still out here. Out here almost every morning. So I'll we'll start with the green stalks. You'll notice they've multiplied. I took advantage of the sale they had for the 4th of July. Today is July 4th, so happy 4th of July, everybody. If green stalks are something you're wanting to do, definitely check out almost every holiday. They have some kind of sale going on. I don't have a promo code, but you can check out pretty much all the other YouTubers and they'll have a code for 10% off. Just pick your favorite one. So the two on the outside are not planted yet. I got them filled with soil, except I ran out. This one's only about halfway full, so I gotta get more after I do the garden tour. One of them's gonna be all strawberries, and the other one, I think I'll be putting some green beans in that, but I'll show you that in a little bit. Not sure what that guy is. On there. Get him, CK. But this is the flowers that the hummingbird was coming after here. The Egyptian star flower. Sage oregano. This whole tier is beets. This tier we're alternating basil and red Thai chili peppers. And I've harvested six of these total so far off of these. Got some more coming on here. And then down here, we've got red romaine and ruby red lettuce. Lettuces do, they struggle in the summer, so I'm not really surprised that they're not doing great right now. Tatsoi, need to do some fertilizing in here, and I keep saying I need to get some of this out, and I do. Just haven't done it. I haven't, I just got stuff to do a salad from the store, so I'll probably be doing that soon. That is a red chili and kale. I keep sticking my finger in spider webs down here. Kale and a golden bell. Okay, um, we got thyme here. That is a golden bell. Mammoth jalapeno. It's got some new fruits coming on. It's getting pretty big. Got a little jalapeno here that I transplanted last week. And I have to get in here and prune some. And these tomatoes just aren't doing great here. They're they're growing and doing well, but we've got this black stuff coming on the leaves. I'm not sure what that is. I'm going to take this one out and that one out because they kind of started this whole mess. And on the other side, that tomato is starting to turn brown too. We got a poblano, a pimento pepper, Tabasco, borage, this is another tomato I'm going to take out. It is finally starting to put on some new growth, but I think it's just making the other one sick. Ancho Grande. This is the Cherokee Purple. You can see it's starting to do it here. This is a Kellogg's Breakfast. And another Cherokee purple. This red tie didn't make it because of the mulch being too close to the stem. This banana pepper has kind of done the same. And that sport pepper. So I'll be taking this. There's one back there. I don't think you can see it from here. I'll be taking those out. This banana pepper seems to be doing okay. It was having a little bit of the issue but I think I got the mulch away fast enough 
from it. A red bell. That's got a bell pepper coming on. Uh oh. Something has ate all the leaves off my sunflower. That's not good, guys. A banana pepper. And the blank spots are space savers. Carrots are starting to come up. Green onions or leeks. And this is a Kellogg's breakfast. Yeah, and it's got a little bit of that brown spot too. Red habanero. This I think is some sort of fungal thing happening. So I saw a video by Gary at the Rusted Garden about using a peroxide spray in water. So I think I'm going to try that. I'll do a test spray and see what becomes of that before I spray it on everything else. That is a Salvaterra Select. Haven't been noticing too many aphids on the tomatoes lately, so that's a good thing. Red habanero. And they're all kind of starting to do it. Our eggplants are blooming. Haven't been noticing more flea beetles on those either. Red habanero. A red bell. Another eggplant. It's got some blooms on it too. Here is one of the bugs. I didn't know what it was. I, I don't know what they are, so they gotta go. Until I know what they are. Seeing some on the green beans. And the closest thing I could find that looked like them was weevils. That is a red bell and my purple cone flower. Something's been eating on it too. Very well could be the bunny. Oh, well, it's got a second bloom forming. Some more carrots in here. A Dr. Witchy's tomato. is a blueberry cherry. Some more porridge. Another Dr. Witchies. Black Sea Man. More carrots in here. It's a Paul Robeson. And my Brad's Atomic Grape. That's crazy. And curled up. All ropes in. And a blueberry cherry. And it's growing finely. It was tiny there for a little while. Got sweet mint and marigolds. This doesn't look like a marigold leaf, but it's in all the other front planters that I have like this. My son planted these. So I'm wondering if it's a different type of marigold or just something else completely. Got some rosemary and a little zinnia. A Mexican tarragon, English thyme, a crayon wrapper, that in my pocket, purple opal basil, and a teddy bear sunflower. That is a yellow bell there. Some chives, 
this mess, we got a whole bunch of pole beans. They're taken off. We got some radishes. I'm gonna come in here and harvest some of the greens, thin them out. They're kind of pokey right now, so I don't know if they would be good for eating unless they're cooked really well. But I did get a composter, so I'm excited about that. Won't have so much waste. These are the potatoes, and I don't love this box setup, but this is my first time growing potatoes, and I remembered that you're supposed to hill them, so this is my contraption to be able to do that without overflowing my garden beds. I decided to go with straw, which I was a little nervous about after the tomatoes and peppers with the straw, but a lot of YouTubers say to use straw or soil, so I decided to go with the straw. And they've grown quite a bit since I put this box up last week, so I may put some more straw throughout here. Some of the plants were a little bit smaller still, but they were like just above this box. So I may put some more straw in here, but I just put stakes in to hold the sides up and we're gonna roll with it for now. We might put a, a bed in specifically for t potatoes later for next year. These are yellow squash and over there there's some onions little tiny onions that got in, put in super late so they probably won't be big at all some dill and more radishes and pole beans I did notice two days ago one Japanese beetle on the pole beans watermelon going crazy starting to set off some little fruits so that bush baby watermelon and a kajari melon and a cantaloupe I don't know which one's which and some beets these are the zucchini. Again, squash bug eggs on these. And I noticed this like freckly spot. So I thought that might be whatever's getting the onion, the peppers over there. Make sure you lift your plants up and check under because there was eggs like down here at the very base of the plant too. Lots of ants on this one today. Yep, there's some down there. Those are squash vine borer eggs. I'm gonna get those real quick. I scratch them off. pinch them really hard and I noticed some like on the flowers up here on other plants so ow that is very pokey one you just have to give it a really good look I'm down here on this one way down here at the base of the soil. Some on the stem. I think I got all those. I'll come back and check them. We'll make you watch the whole process. We got Qatari melons and cantaloupe. Don't know which one's which. Another watermelon. That's starting to set off little babies. Brussels sprouts. Something's been eaten on those. I 
haven't really seen anything on them, so I'm kind of led to believe it's the rabbits. I'm not really worried about these leaves too much because I want the sprouts, so it is the bunny. He's welcome to them, but we will probably be putting a fence around the garden space. I got a Lakota squash and a butternut squash and a blue Hubbard squash. There was one planted here. It never came up. I may leave that space open or plant something there. I haven't really decided. This guy is getting big. As this grows up, I'll start trimming off these bottom leaves so get more airflow through here. I'll come through and check for squash vine borer eggs in a little bit. Some dill. I put seeds here because the plant I transplanted died. So I think those are coming up from seed. Some yellow habaneros. The little habanero baby. And these are beets. And more of the Lakota blue hybrid and butternut squash. Eggs. <laughs> Not eggs, butternut squash. Here we have cucumbers. These are radishes. My cucamelons. I'm going to trim off the back of these tomatoes so they're not encroaching so much on the cucamelons. They're starting to go a little bit crazy over here. Trying to redirect them to go up the teepee. May need to put some more cross strings in here. Got lemon balm, marigolds, lemon thyme, cinnamon basil. I compared that to a plant at the store that had cinnamon basil and it smelled the same so decided it's cinnamon. Thai basil. We're back at the thyme. Lemongrass. Peppermint and spearmint. And there. over here to some of the starts that I did. Those two are cherub tomatoes. My husband loves those from the grocery store, little cherry tomatoes. I saved seeds from some of those and planted them. And that was only a couple weeks ago. So the turnaround time on being able to plant saved seeds is pretty quick because both I planted four seeds and they've all four come up. Well, last week after the video tour, I planted up all these containers that I had showed you. So I'll show you what we got going on in them right now. But it's going to be changing, and you'll see why. Alright, so we got jalapenos and bush beans in here. These ones aren't going to change. This one hasn't come up yet. But if it's going to come up, it should be any time. Because these were just planted last week seven days ago this is a scalloped squash like a patty pan kind of and i'll be putting tomato cages in here it's got all those tomato cages from my stepdad i'll be thinning these out though i'm not gonna leave two in here more contender beans got scallop squash in here. Again, I'll be thinning. And this is a pickle bush. It does vine, but not so vigorously as regular cucumbers, so a tomato cage will be fine. I've done, I've done it like that before. Pineapple ground cherries in this one. And it looks like a nasturtium is making an appearance there. I believe that's what I put in here have to go back and watch the video or check my journal and then in these three some more pickle bush that's not a pickle bush though I'll be putting a lot of those beans in the green stock and I'm gonna try them they're not recommended to go in the leaf planters which is the one that I have 
There are all three of them are leaf planters. The originals have different pockets and for the originals they recommend three bean plants per pocket and I just won't plant as many per pocket and I'll see how they do in the leaf. I'm always like I'll try it anyway and see what happens. So we got all of these pepper plants yesterday. My husband loves peppers. We all love peppers really but that's one thing he's really excited about. These peppers I'm probably not putting in the green stalks because I need somewhere to put all those green beans. People talk about chicken math all the time, but like I really think plant math is a thing because we want all the plants and we don't have all the space to put the plants. So this is kind of a plant math thing. We got some more mammoth jalapenos. And part of it is, like, they only set a few fruits at a time, so we want to have enough at one time to do something with them. So we got, I think, three more mammoth jalapenos. I'm going to dump the water out of this tray because peppers don't really like to be wet, but they were super dried out. Yeah, mammoth jalapeno. Got... Uh, hot banana pepper and it's already got a huge pepper on there got an Anaheim pepper it's already got a big one on there and a Mexibel it's a spicy bell pepper and it's already got some on there and another hot banana pepper these are all ever bearing strawberries got some lavender got those awesome dragon's breath celosias just because I've never seen anything like them and they're pretty cool. So they're fun. We got the lilies because they smelled wonderful and they were full of bees so I figured that would be a good thing. I'm not going to plant them in the beds. I'll probably keep them in that pot for this season and maybe divide out the bulbs later but lily spread so i'm not gonna put those in my garden beds this is a navajo thornless blackberry we got two of these originally 288 we got them on sale for 272 at walmart and they are not in great shape but i figure for that price it's worth trying to save them we got two lime trees another one of my husband's desires which I'm fine with because I, I love limes in my water as opposed to lemon water but these will go in pots and they'll have to come in once it starts getting cooler because we're in zone 5b and citrus is not going to do well here we got that's the other blackberry and we got two meager red raspberries for $2.96 they were originally over ten dollars they're saving eight eighty eight so again they're not in great shape they're pretty dried out I'm gonna try and save them we got some cone flowers most of the stuff was half off we got these at Menards before we found those strawberries at Lowe's because nowhere else had strawberries. But I got four of these packs. And they're all ever bearing. These are Ozark Beauty. And those are Sweet Berry. These are bare roots. And then at Lowe's, these were also half off. Sorry, I'm not showing this very well. But I can't really see my phone because of the sun. So I can't really see, see what I'm showing in here. But we got two... Jersey blueberries. These are all self-pollinating varieties and hardy to our zone. Got two seedless Concord grapes. Some hardy prolific kiwis. And these can take seven years to establish and they're like grape sized fruit. But when I was doing my research after we got home yesterday, once they're mature, each plant can produce up to 100 pounds of fruit, even though they're only a little tiny grape size in a season. When I planted 
all of that last weekend. I did not know that I'd be getting two green stalks or buying all these plants. So that's kind of where the, the plant math comes in. Um, I'm really happy with the green stalks so far and I've wanted more and I saw they were on sale and my husband's like, yes, you gotta get them. I, I love those. He thinks we're gonna try and use them inside in the winter too um, to grow some stuff. So we'll see how that all plays out. But I'm excited that he's excited about what we have going on here. So I'm gonna roll with it. It's a lot of learning. And I probably need to draw the line here because I do work full time and homeschool. And that is the composter. It's going to be put together today. It's a tumbling one. And it's like 47 and a half gallons. That's supposed to compost within a few weeks. So we'll see how that goes. It's another learning curve that'll be going on but it's all good things um, super excited and I'll try and film some of this what we got going on I'll have some help doing stuff today my mother-in-law got corn from Walmart yesterday they had it on sale for 10 cents in a year so I think she got like 30 we're gonna try and do some pressure canning today when the Sun runs us out of the garden we'll go inside and work on some of that stuff so thanks for hanging out with me today and seeing what we have going on. If you have any tips or suggestions on stuff you see going on, please feel free to leave those in the comments. Give us a like and a subscribe if you feel like you'd like to do that. And we'll see you soon. Bye. This window? Yeah. Yeah. That's the broken one.